Hey there YouTube, welcome to Big Mike Beard Wisdom. So today we'll be tackling some slow flow from the reverse osmosis system and things to kind of look for to kind of rule out possible problems. So one of the first things is that a reverse osmosis system needs to have good pressure. So as long as you've got good water pressure on everything else, that's probably good to go. And then something else kind of handy to have is a water pressure gauge somewhere in your house. So by this filter here, I've got a water pressure gauge and you can pretty much see the water on this side of the filter, which is the house side of the filter, is up about, you know, 52 to 54 PSI. So it's got plenty of pressure feeding the house. Our reverse osmosis system is actually down in the basement below the kitchen, which is pretty handy. But you kind of want to check real quick just to make sure you don't have any kinked lines. So you've got the water feeding in to the reverse osmosis system. And then from here, this feeds into a T. This feeds to the sink area. That's the like the post carbon filter. This feeds down to the tank itself, which is something we'll check in just a moment. This is the inlet line, and that one is a drain. But you want to check and make sure that you don't have any pinched lines or something that might be causing a problem. Once you know that's all good to go, next, I'd recommend taking a quick look at your tank. So if this tank is light, like this is, it means that there's very little water in it. And the way it works is there's a bladder that expands inside of here. So as the water is fed in, it pushes down and expands the bladder out. So if this had a lot of water in it right now, then a possible issue could be a charge problem because this gets charged up with air on the back side of that bladder. There's just a simple Schrader valve and each reverse osmosis system would be a little bit different. I think this one, when empty, it gets charged to 8 PSI. So being that it's light, we know this isn't an issue right now. So more than likely the issue is just that I need to change the filters. For this system, the first step of changing the filters is to shut the water off to the tank down here. So by doing that, it seals this off and helps prevent any kind of weird stuff that the filters may launch out from getting into it and causing a problem later. So now that that's shut off, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll shut the water off here that feeds into it. So all I gotta do is just twist that shut. Now that should be off. And then an easy thing to do too would be to go upstairs real quick open up the valve that way it relieves pressure because right now whatever pressure this had in the system on this side which from the amount of flow that we had should be very little pressure but there might still be a teeny little bit of pressure <laughs> opening the valve upstairs ought to help release that pressure and then the way these ones work is that essentially you've got a locked and an unlocked position and the label can actually twist when you go to put it on. So that's why this isn't quite fully lined up. So first real quick, I'll grab down here where it's nice and easy to grip and go ahead and turn this. So you can kind of feel it pass a detent and then it's only about a quarter turn and then that pops out. So you can see a little bit of water came out, not too much. There's your filter. You're able to see like a little bit of almost like an iron kind of deposit kind of thing going on with that orange going. So this sediment one is now out. Next up, we'll take the carbon block one out. And like you can kind of see that the label likes to free spin. But 
the plastic itself doesn't turn. So just be cautious of that whenever you go to tighten everything up, that way you know everything's good to go. So again, you gotta kinda clear a detent, kinda feel the click, about a quarter turn, and then this just drops out. So this is kinda cool, cause you can kinda see still the same little bit of orange, but the other side's much more cleaner looking. So that's probably doing a fair amount of filtering in itself too. Now for the sake of science, I just want to crack this open to see if the water flows through when it's cracked open. Interesting. With this big filter, What's kind of interesting whenever I change this big filter is that normally there's a little bit of this orange kind of funky water and stuff like that is actually backed up in the line a little bit. So I normally wind up taking and cracking this open to kind of get some of that orange flushed out. So what I'll do back with the reverse osmosis system is I'll go ahead and I'll disconnect the line and then run that just for a couple seconds just kind of purge out any like filtered stuff where it's backing up again over there and hopefully help the new filter not have a whole bunch of the just dirty water slammed into it. Brand new filter, new sediment one. So that'll go in the first position. And then we'll line it up like how we had the other one lined up. Whoop, there goes the label sliding around again. So this is kind of shimmied up into it, starts to slide. So it turns in about a quarter turn, passes over the detent, we should be good. I'm gonna slide this down and kind of line it up with the marks here. So there's a little arrow right here and right there on these so that's pointing to the lock point so that's good and locked so we should be good to go with that one and we'll do the same thing for the other filter and these come pretty simple so it's just one of those things where I bought this from the Culligan dealer and then you just have to remove this upper kind of like plastic wrap and the plastic cap and then just install them so this should be the same thing as the earlier one. This time we'll kind of focus a little bit on where that arrow is and the position of the, like the cartridge. So you can see that's pointing at like the unlocked position. You get this nice and pushed up all the way. Then go ahead and turn it right about there. It feels a little bit of resistance, so that's where it's starting to hit the detent. There it goes up and over the detent, and it's in nice and locked in. So now those two are in and done. Next up is this one here. And then this is, I think, like uh, granulated carbon or something like that, but it basically it's a post filter. So here's the new post filter. You want to know which way the flow goes, that way you put it in the correct way. And then these, you'll push this in, which should release the hose, and then you should be able to pull the hose out. So essentially, oh, can't do it one-handed. <laughs> but you'll just, you'll push this collar in. That should relieve pressure that holds onto this line and should be able to take it out. So when I went and purged this line up here, what I did was I pushed it in. That way this collar sits all the way flat like that, and that allows you to pull the line out. And then once it's inserted, you can kind of see it separates back just a little bit so you know it's locked in. Basically, you can see how this one's nice and squashed down flat so it hasn't been extended yet, whereas that one's extended. So you want to get that pushed down far enough that it looks like this. All right, so all the filters are in, and what we're ready to do is basically turn the water back on up here. You want to leave the water off down there because that'll help any of the stuff inside of here get flushed out and not go down 
into the storage tank. So I'll go ahead and slowly turn this back on. You can kind of hear the water moving as it fills these up. And what this allow it to do is it allow it to make reverse osmosis water directly off of line pressure. So we'll see how much more or less the membrane is able to push through just off of the water pressure in general, not having the tank factored in. So we should be able to see a little bit of maybe some funky water come out. The Culligan technicians recommended that I run at least two cups through it. And I think because we're down in the basement, and there's so much more line for us, it's gonna be a little bit more than two cups. With the water pressure that we had, we're gonna see how much like the membrane is able to push out just by itself. There it's passing the water. And the air. And real quick, I mean, maybe half a cup of water blasted out of there real quick. Just a little bit of something in there. So now we'll just sit and wait for it to start dribbling. And then we'll see what kind of water comes out. They said there might be some like charcoal coloring to it and stuff like that. I think because of that GAC filter that we just replaced. Doing a quick leak check, so just kind of listening for anything weird. Checking the lines, making sure everywhere we disconnected and reconnected stuff, nothing's wet or damp. So we should be good as far as that goes. We got some dripping coming through. So this is about the rate that I think these things produce. So as it's forcing the water through the membrane, it actually doesn't make a whole crazy amount of water. All right. And if everything looks super wet over here, it's because I wasn't getting any flow coming through and I thought maybe there might be a problem. So something else I wanted to check was the capillary tube that this feeds in through for the return. Because the capillary tube is supposed to be open, you should be able to blow through it. So I disconnected the line here, and a little bit of water blew out. But I disconnected the line here, and wow! <laughs> Whatever pressure was in here just let loose. I'd already shut the switch off, so basically I had shut the switch off, disconnected over here, fair amount blew out. And then I walked over here, well, then I disconnected this section here, and that had a fair amount of blowout too. I really couldn't blow through the capillary tube this way, but I started blowing through the, through the tube this way. That seemed to work and maybe free up any kind of obstruction it had, and then I was able to blow back through this way. So I wonder if there was something going on where it wasn't able to move what it needed to move out. So if maybe there was a slight clog here in the capillary. And then... Back up top, you can kind of see we're up to about maybe a little bit over half a cup of water now. And it's hard to see with the phone, but especially in the metal sink, but there is a slight grayish hue to this. So it's definitely flushing out, I think, that bit of carbon from the GAC filter. So once we get up to about the two cup range, I'll empty it out and then keep running it. All right, so we're about three cups. I'm going to shut this off just for a quick second so we take a look at the water. So it's a little bit darker, but it's one of those things where you're purging out those filters. And especially that GAC filter, which I think has like carbon in it. So that might be why it's a little bit dark.
And then with the size of my lines, I'm going to keep this running for a little bit. But it's neat because you can kind of see just in the time that we had it off how much little bit of pressure it had built up in it. That it seems like it has more flow. So, be interested to see about how long this takes. So right now, it's about 8.58. It'll be interesting to see in about 10 minutes where this lands. On this amount of water, this is looking much clearer than the other one was. So I think we got whatever carbon and stuff like that more or less flushed out. And then this has only been maybe about 8 minutes. And we're almost to about the 2 cup mark. So that gives you an idea of how much production it's able to make just through the reverse osmosis membrane itself. So if you're kind of thinking, hey, you know, why do I not have enough water or something? It might be one of those things where you need to understand like how much production you have and how much it makes. We can go ahead and open this valve. That way it can start charging the tank up. So now all the water that was essentially dripping out before will go more or less into the storage tank because the faucet's off upstairs. All right, so it's been a few hours now. Let's see how fast this comes out. Woo, she's going. I wouldn't expect that whole big old tank to be fully charged just yet. I think it's one of those things where maybe, you know, overnight that should be fully charged. And then tomorrow morning, this will come out pretty good. Other factors that can help or hinder your production comes down to like temperature. So like right now, it's kind of chilly in the basement. And with it being mounted to like the external wall, it's kind of in a cold spot. So I'm willing to bet it's probably like 50 degrees-ish around where it's at. Whereas most reverse osmosis systems, the amount of flow that you get is metered at about 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So when it says that you should be producing this much water per minute or per hour, that's at a higher temperature. And having a colder temperature will result in less being produced. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll check you next time.